All right, Coach, uh, so this is this uh, RPO concept, and I know uh, Coach Peterson likes to run this a lot. He ran this in Philly, um, and I just want to talk about why this is such a such an issue for defenses, and everybody runs these now, but he seems to have a, a special affinity for them. Well, he does have a huge affinity for it, um, and, and I'm almost wondering if that, if that was, you know, three, four, five years ago right. when he really got – Philadelphia going right I think now so many more teams are doing it in the league so many more teams um, understand how to defend it mm -hmm. that what's happening now is I think it's just a part of what you do I it's see. not the staple right you know but you still have to respect it this is a quarterback that had been doing it all his career in college and was very mm -hmm. successful and I think they're going to rely on what he does and does well and something else I was wondering about because you said it's not as common and I agree do they just throw this in here so you got to prep for it? I think so, to a degree. But because it's something that, that Trevor Lawrence has done and right. did well, I think, again, you know, Coach uh, you know, Peterson is thinking, okay, hey, let's keep it rolling. Yeah, absolutely. So here, obviously, the, the read player yep. is this number 41 here, right? Yes. And the, thing, the reason, as an offensive player, I like this is because you get plus hats to the front side of the run because really 41 is not in the count. Correct. And he's basically made impotent by the fact that he's got to defend the pass and play the run. How would you coach this player here to make this well, go? Well, the biggest thing what you want to do is you want him to do just like he's doing right now. He's reading through the process right now. Okay, he sees the mesh, he's popping his feet, and he's reading and he's looking. Okay, the thing that's to the benefit of Pittsburgh's defense is if you count it, it's an eight-man box. Right. Versus a six-man front or whatever. Correct. Right. So because if you count it and it's an eight-man box, they've got enough hats to slow this play down. Yeah. And as the play progresses, you see what happens. Again, as you said, they're reading off of 41, the, 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 the weak side linebacker. Okay. He goes through his progression. He reads it the way he's supposed to. And then he reacts to the ball. Okay. But what happens is because of, of the way it's played at the point of attack. Yeah. Okay. It is, it's difficult for them, you know, as far as Jacksonville to have success on this. And yeah. you see this illustrated right here. Again, what's going to happen is 48 may get a little bit upfield and really should have set it down a little sooner. Yeah, because okay? you, you, you want a hard edge there, right? Correct. Okay. But what I like really is the way 24 yeah. goes into their guard. He comes in low, good pad level, and right, helps set a front right there. Yeah. 94 plays off it with his eyes back inside, and right now, as everything stands, there's really no place for this ball carrier to go. Yeah. Again, eight-man box, you know, good reads, good keys for the most part, and flowing the direction they're supposed to. If that ball cuts back, you know, their right, their right yeah. defensive tackle has a chance to make a play. 51 plays with his hands. He's got a chance to separate, get off the center, make a play. 94, as it looks, if that ball continues straight ahead, there's the tackle. And as I said, I really like the way the defensive back came in and set a low bridge in terms of just holding the point of attack. Yeah, and I think the thing that gives me anxiety is if you go back to that, there seems to be a ton of air in the defense, right? right. It's not like, you know, when you see an outside zone stretch, it's like all nice and tight. Right. It's just like a ton of space with a good player. But, and so, but you're saying that's okay because right. you've got guys who can tackle and make plays here. Correct. Cause, but, but, but again, it, what it looks like and what it ends up are two different right. things because, mm -hmm. again, if 65 crosses face on the guard, yep. okay, and gets to his left, all right, that cutback is shut down. Well, so, well, he cut over off of 65. If 41 tempos it, he'll be he in cutback. Exactly. Because right? you get the back, kind of like you were talking about with the pass concepts last week. You just get him to bubble, take an extra step, increase the reaction time of the defense. Correct, and that's what you would love here, and this is what you really like about it because, to, again, to me, 24 coming in as a defensive back supporting against the run, yeah. okay, does a nice job. Not like what 94 does because he's got his hands on the initial blocker mm -hmm. who's going to work to 24, okay? Yep. But he's not going to have any real power because 94 is taking a little bit of it off of it. And it's interesting you bring up the eight-man front. It actually screws up the offensive line's count here because really the guard tackle com or the, the center guard combination should be going to 51. Correct. And it's push crack on 24, 41's the read guy. So actually bringing that extra guy right. kind of messes up the count. I, I think it does because for the most part this – this play is really set for a seven or right. six man box more so than it is an eight man box. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's super interesting, coach. And then this one I think is really interesting because we've talked a lot in the media and throughout, yep. you know, covering the team about keeping the quarterback in the pocket. Yep. And I knew Trevor Lawrence was athletic. I don't think I realized how athletic he Oh, is. he's very athletic. One thing that Trevor, he's, he's not a shake guy. Right. He's a put his leg in the, put in the ground and go vertical. Right. He runs, runs very well. He's, I believe he ran a 4-6 coming out of college. Yeah. Um, 
So he is, he's got that ability to run away from you. But the thing's happening here, and what, what we have to be aware of is, again, this is a two-man concept we're going to see from Pittsburgh. They're going to lock up all the receivers. Mm. And one of the things that Trevor does very well is he's got his eyes looking. Once he sees this, mm -hmm. he knows that his next best alternative, unless somebody wins now, is to tuck the it's ball and run. Good. And if you're not disciplined, okay, if you're, if you're not aware, mm -hmm. he's got a chance to make a big play. And, and really, um, you know, again, as we look at it, the man coverage, yep. basically playing two men, everybody's accounted for, two safeties deep up over the top. He reads that right now, the split in the safeties. He sees that the linebacker is coming to the back that's down here. Mm -hmm. And really, what's going to happen is because their right defensive end makes an inside move with nobody covering to the outside, he knows he has an escape route. So would you say this is a selfish play by number 49 here? Yes, yeah. I'd say it's not very disciplined. What, what they need to do is either they didn't have a cover call or the tackle didn't realize he had a cover call. Or again, I see what you're saying. Because you know like saying? you say a cover call, like if the end plays inside, yep. the three technique or the two eye here is going to play around, right? Correct. And they kind of play off of each other, kind of like right. a, a natural or something yes. like that, right? Yeah, a natural for the most part. But to be honest, a two eye or a one technique really isn't going to be sure. looking to run the natural. Right. Okay. Now, if you come and you tell him from the beginning, hey, defensive end has a two way go. Right. So now I'm aware that I may have to run the natural. I may right. have to cover for him. Right. The second thing that's part of the problem, and we had this issue during camp, yeah. is this is not what we call a level rush. Okay, He never gets to the level of the quarterback's drop before he goes inside. Talking about number 49 here, yes. right? Yep. So what has to happen is because he goes inside, he comes inside way too soon. Right. Way too soon because he's not at the quarterback's level. Now what's going to happen is 74 is going to recover. Robinson's going to re recover enough time right. to get his hand on this guy, just enough to allow Trevor to get outside and turn it into a good play for the team. Yes, absolutely. And, yeah. and there again, you have to be disciplined. You have to understand when you're playing man, you've got to be aware. Your, your pass rushers have to be aware that this guy has the ability to do that, and that's get outside the pocket and make some yards. Yeah, and you guys do play a fair amount of match principle, right? Yep. So obviously that's really key for that defensive line to be dialed in. Absolutely. And yeah. again, the key to that, again, is making sure you have a level rush. Yep. And secondly, if you do have a guy going inside, that there is a cover player outside to help contain this guy. We're going to take a look at a couple of plays that I think highlight some Jamin Davis growth here, right? So obviously we're getting Jamin Davis. Where is he at? Right, Young man right here. And we got a motion pre-snap from, uh, from Kansas City, and they brought Jamin in with it. And to me, that's a pretty big man zone indicator, right? Yes. Especially with these guys over here stacked on top of each other. And Patrick Mahomes, the guy you've talked about before, sees that and he says, oh, wait, what's going on? Oh, I'm going to check the play. And he says, oh, a little tap of the helmet. And we get into, we get into a new man beater here, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to get a, basically a pick play here. And then we're going to run around here on the outside. Why, coach, is this hard? And why is this cool that Jamin is able to match this? Well, the first thing, you know, that they, that they, they do understand is that we're in a man concept. But... The thing that I like what Jason uh, Jamin's doing is he's being active in terms of his movement. He's not staying static. He's not making it easy on anybody as far as where is Jamin. He shows the B-gap potential blitz. Okay. Then he backs out, puts himself in position where we say a no-pick position. Okay. In other words, he's aware that this guy is in a pick position. Jamin has to now move himself into that spot where he can't be picked by the receiver. So as the play unfolds, you see how Jamin steps up. Okay, yeah. now he's going to loosen himself, and he is going to get himself over the top. Right. And, again, like, to me, when I see this, I'm like, this, this play, they call, you know, like, they talk about putting your offense in the best position to be successful. They checked this because they thought they could get him. Correct. But, again, you guys run a lot of pick stuffs in practice, too, yes. the commanders. He's gotten a lot better at this. Yes, he has. And, you know, he's got the athletic ability to run, and that's one thing that really attracted to him as, one of, as our potential draft pick. So what happened was, on this particular play, okay, the, the quarterback, he reads the fact that Jamin is over the top, and he knows if he tries to put that ball in there, Jamin's there to make a play on the ball. Right. So what he tries to do, he tries to dump it to the tight end who was trying to set the pick. Right. And then, again, I just it's, it's a little thing, like the ball's not targeted, but he's the reason that this play is successful. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. And, again, he's done well in coverage. He was always a great coverage player, but I think the area that he's improved the most is in the run. Here we go. Jamin Davis right here in the middle of the defense. He's going to – Sneak up in here and get a nice TFL, and we're going to talk about 
why this is good from the end zone here real quick. Okay. But he, here we go. But again, he reads the play, sees the crease, and gets through it. He yeah. doesn't hesitate. He's very decisive. One of the things that we, we've we been working on him is that is getting downhill, getting downhill. Right. And he seems to be getting it even more and more. Well, I think that's the thing is last year when you watched him, he was very indecisive. And now you see a guy who's, I don't even know if he's doing the right thing all the time, but he's fast to the football. And I think yes. that's a, a confident football player. It's a good football player. Absolutely. And what you're seeing, though, is you're seeing a guy that understands the concepts a little bit better right. than he had in the past. So as he's reading this play, okay, and he's seeing all the action that goes on, the one thing he does, and he does it very well, is he plays off of the tackle in front of him. Yeah. The tackle gets what we call two-headed, okay? Two, oh, yeah, let's talk about two-headed. He two-headed. gets scooped, basically. Okay, yeah. okay? Is that a good or a bad thing, That's coach? a bad thing. Because yeah. Once you get scooped, once you have two hats on you, <clears throat> you've got to maintain your crease. We Cause lose he, our because he really should be over here. Right? Yes, he yep. should. He should. But what happens is Jamin sees sees the play, recognizes it. Instead of staying and trying to work to where he's supposed to, right? Okay. Now that he sees that Mathis has been scooped, yep. he now replaces him and gets himself into a crease to make a play. Yeah, I love that right here. And then right in the and again, like this is this is a tough play. This is a tough fit for everybody. And he's just so decisive here yes. to make that tackle. I mean, that has to make you feel good about him. Going into the 2022 season. As far as his growth, absolutely. You know that now because he's learning, he's growing, he's playing faster because he's confident. Yeah, absolutely. Coach, thanks so much. Always fun to talk about young players getting better.